All right, hey guys, uh, I'm back. Um, sorry for the delay again, but you know, I've been working really hard on my record, and uh, I don't know if any of you guys have a recording studio experience, but uh, if you don't, don't romanticize it. It's uh, very, very tedious work, and sometimes can be very stressful work because it demands the best from you, which unfortunately I don't think I, I have my best work on that record, but uh, it's more about the composition than the guitar playing. Uh, in any case, uh, today's agenda is this. I decided I'm going to make a new playlist uh, called Pentatonic Theory, and we're finally able to broach the subject because um, we were able to go through the major minor key system. Now bear in mind, the major minor key system, there is much, much more that can be said about it, but if you, uh, if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you could take the material I gave you and work with it. For example, chord building, when you build an A minor uh, 7 chord in the natural minor, you get A, C, E, G, but if you build it in the harmonic minor, you get A, C, E, G sharp, which is a dissonant chord. And uh, uh, that, those are, that's kind of for your investigation. I did tell you that the three minor keys tend to blend together, even with the minor modes as well. But now, pentatonic theory, probably the most likable for guitar players and the easiest to master, pentatonic theory is, is much, much simpler. However, you do still need uh, some knowledge of harmony and how harmony works in order to broach it. But the coolest thing, which I will demonstrate down the line a little bit today, is that the pentatonic theory is um, kind of a shorthand and you don't have to think of what mode am I in. This, this makes for a much, much simpler situation. Like I said, I, I will explain that later on in this uh, lesson. All right, now, uh, the properties of the uh, pentatonic scale are uh, very interesting, as, as the properties of all music is. It's just a wonderful, wonderful thing to explore. Um, but what I will say is this, uh, when you extract, you have our 12 notes of the chromatic system, the entire genetic pool of music in those 12 notes. And when you extract from those 12 notes a major scale, that'll be seven notes. Well, seven and five is 12, so there's five left over. And guess what? Those five are the pentatonic scale. I'll give you a quick example. I have here up top uh, the chromatic scale see, uh, yeah, you can see this. Uh, extracted out of that, I have the B-flat major scale, B-flat, C, D, E-flat, F, G, A, right? Now what I did here was um, I took the leftover notes, okay, which is B, D-flat, E, G-flat, A, but since uh, the pentatonic we're about to extract is from the key of E major, I had to turn these uh, flats into sharps and harmonically, so now we get B, C sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp. All right, now if I put them in order of the pentatonic formula, which is whole, whole, um, whole, whole, one and a half, whole, one and a half, I get whole, whole, one and a half, whole, one and a half, uh, back to E. Uh, this is E, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, and I'm sure you guitar players must know this particular pentatonic scale since E major is such an important key for guitar. Um, so you notice, when I extracted the B-flat major scale, I get the E major um, uh, pentatonic, which is left over. And you'll also note that the, the two different keys, B-flat and E, are a tritone distance away, three whole steps away, which again, there's some sort of mystery behind the tritone and how that all works. Um, all right, now... Uh, like the modes, the pentatonic scale has more than one root, all right? However, uh, the pentatonic makes only two roots available, and there's a reason for that I won't get into right now. Um, actually, I will get into it. Um, when you build a triad, you have to think of it like a gravity generation unit. You turn it on and suddenly things are attracted to it of the same nature. So when you build a pentatonic scale, uh, you can only extract two triads out of that uh, pentatonic scale. Uh, C major pentatonic, uh, ignore, ignore the stuff on top for now, but uh, let's see. C major pentatonic <laughs> is C, D, E, G, A. 
Well, I could get a CEG, which is a C major triad, and I could get ACE, which is an A minor triad. Again, that relative major, relative minor connection, again, very interesting. Uh, but in any case, uh, those are the two roots that you could find in the pentatonic scale, C and C major pentatonic, also known as A minor pentatonic. The big mistake that, that especially guitarists make, because piano players could see the whole thing, guitarists can't, it's more difficult. <clears throat> but uh, they'll say, for example, this is an A minor pentatonic, whereas this is a C major pentatonic. Now, the thing here is, uh, is that it's the same five notes being cycled. So A minor is C major. If I start on the C note on the A minor quotes shape, I get... Sounds like C major. Only difference is there's the A down there, but that A shows up later on, C, D, E, G, A. All right, so um, there are two roots to the pentatonic scale, and those roots are created by virtue of the fact that there are two triads that you could build, and only two that you could build inside of a pentatonic scale. There is no such thing, just like there is what I said about the Greek modes, there's no such thing as a major scale or a minor scale. Uh, same with the Greek modes. A minor pentatonic and C major pentatonic are the same thing. So if you need to play a C major pentatonic, you could play this so-called A minor pentatonic and you'll get a C major pentatonic. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. Uh, so we have uh, two roots inside the pentatonic scale. The pentatonic scale, um, you must have heard of the Chinese or Russian dolls where you have a big doll and then you flip its head off and there's another doll inside, you flip its head off, there's another doll inside. Similar in music. Um, the pentatonic scale, uh, first we have the chromatic scale up here. If I drop out of that, the C major scale, I get C, D, E, F, G, A. And from that, I get C, D, E, G, A, which is the C major pentatonic. Uh, then you could get C, E, G, which is a C major triad. And finally, at the end of it all, C, which would be root in this case. So um, the pentatonic comes out of the major scale. And in fact, there are three major and minor. They're the same thing. In other words, in the key of C, you can get a C major slash A minor pentatonic. You can get a D minor slash F major pentatonic, and you could get an E minor slash G major pentatonic. All right. Um, so that is my debunking of this idea that you have a specific scale shape for A minor pentatonic and a different one for C major pentatonic. Not true. And I will now demonstrate that. First, I'll play a C major chord progression. Uh, let me loop this thing. If I were to solo on that, I'm going to do my A, so-called A minor pentatonic shape. See that C note right there? That's root. And it's not going to sound any different than the so-called C major pentatonic. to the so-called A minor. So there's that. Now, uh, now in converse, I'm going to do an A minor progression where A minor is the root chord. And basically our A minor, so-called A minor pentatonic shape will function and so will the C major pentatonic and it will function as A minor. Even 
why you see major, the A was rooted. Now, uh, if you've done any studying on the pentatonics, there are five different shapes you could use and two important sliding pentatonic scales. Uh, if you guys don't know that, just request it in your comments and uh, I'll, uh, I'll post something up on my website for you to grab or on uh, Google Drive. All right, so, mm. now, why don't you need um, to think about modes when you use pentatonics? Good question. All right, I'm going to show you first. This will be slightly abstract, but with a little thought, you'll get it. Um, let's see, up here I have the C Ionian, C Lydian, and C Mixolydian scales. And you may note that uh, where a change happens is on the fourth step. These two have the F in common, but this has an F sharp, Lydian. And then the seventh step, four and seven, very, very important notes. And guess again, guess what again? They are a tritone distance away, the four and the seven. Um, and uh, Ionian and Lydian, we have a B natural, but a Mixolydian, we have a B flat. Now, when you check out the pentatonic scale at the bottom, notice that it's eliminating the very note that defines what mode you're in. And when we go to the, the seventh step here, you notice also that note doesn't exist. So I could play a chord progression that contains Lydian, Ionian, and Mixolydian chords. And in the case of using modes, I would have to change my scales every time. Let me see if I could put something simple together. Uh, in a chord progression that can clearly demonstrate this. Uh, let me see. Uh, I want Lydian. All right. I'm going to stick on each chord pretty long. This way there's time to really hear what's going on. All right, so C. I'm going to play C major, D major, B flat major, and C major. Now. Why did I choose those chords? Well, C Lydian has a D major, uh, D major chord in it, and C Mixolydian has a B flat major chord in it. Why I'm doing this is to show you I have to change my seven note scale up to play through all these chords with the same C root. Okay, so here we go. C. tell if you guys can see the neck of this guitar. I'm having some real problems here, but uh, I'll play it. I'll try to lift the neck up so you can see.
this, and I'll just play a C major scale throughout, and you're going to hear some bad notes. Just I'll play C major scale. Because the pentatonic scale uh, eliminates the notes that I had to change were F sharp, I had to change F to F sharp for the Lydian, and B to B flat for the mixolydian, but those don't, notes do not exist in the C major pentatonic, so I ha can have a global scale now that I don't have to think about what mode I'm, I, I'm in, and thank God for that, because I hate thinking that way personally. And here we go, I'm just going to play up and down C major pentatonic. <laughs> I'm usually very aware of these modal changes, so if I'm doing my pentatonic, yeah, I might throw the B flat in when the mixolydian comes in. I might throw the F sharp in, uh, but I'm not going to play the entirety of the modal scale. I'll just chuck those notes in, you know, around my pentatonic scale just to mess around and sound like I know what I'm doing, because I do know what I'm doing. That's, that's the deal. All right, so now, um, now granted, there are situations where... Um, you can't go global. Notice that uh, C uh, Ionian, C Mixolydian, and C Lydian all have one thing in common, C root. Well, when you get outside that C root, it's not going to work quite well. In other words, if we start getting keys that are further away from the key of C, you're going to have to change up your pentatonic entirely. Now let's talk about that. Uh, there's a song called Blue Bossa. <laughs> jazz repertoire which is C minor and then it modulates to D flat in big fat sections so you have time to think. Uh, here's how the progression goes. As soon as you get more than two notes, uh, like if I compare the, the key of F, which is contains the C mixolydian scale, if I compare the, C, the key of F to the key of C, first of all, they both have a C chord in common, and so does the key of G, by the way. It's on the circle of fifths. So you could circle the two families that are around the key you're looking at, and you'll find that they're very, very close. <clears throat> Basically, what I'm saying is there are six notes in common between C and uh, F, and there are six notes in common between C and G, which makes them very closely related. There's only one note difference. I'm sure every guitar player, the first scale just about that they ever learn is this particular shape. Uh, in terms of frets, that's 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8, 5, 8. Uh, um, I mean 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5, 8, 5, 8. Now, this scale you can use as a gauge. The, if you think of your index finger as being the minor root and your pinky as being the major root, if I'm in G minor, well, my, this is my minor finger. I take my scale and move it to the G note. I have G minor pentatonic. Also, B flat major pentatonic, it's the same thing. All right, if I want to go from A minor to A major, all I do is switch. In other words, my minor finger makes this A minor pentatonic, but I move it down and put my pinky at the fifth fret. This makes it A major pentatonic. So this is a handy little guide for guitar players to change keys. Now, given that, I uh, 
I'm in C minor, this is my minor finger, so I get on the C note, I'm playing C minor pentatonic. And then I have to go to D flat major. My pinky is my major note, my major finger, so I move that to a D flat, play the same scale shape. And now I could, I could use this in the key of D flat major or B flat minor. I'm going to demonstrate this in the song Blue Bossa where um, you're going to see me move and hear me move from the key of C minor to the key of D flat major and here we go. two roots inside the pentatonic scale. I don't know why this is. People get really confused with this stuff. If This is my minor finger. This is my major finger. If I want to go to C minor, I move that shape where my minor finger hits the C note. If I want to go to C major, I, do, I uh, take my major finger, my pinky, and move it to the C note. Uh, if you think about this and experiment with it, you'll get it, okay? All right, so uh, let me see. I think I'm going to leave that at, like it is today. I'm going to create a new playlist called uh, Pentatonic Theory. Um, and uh, I'll explore a little bit more uh, with the pentatonics, including something I call artificial pentatonics. We'll break down the, uh, the formula for the pentatonic scale, which is different if you have the minor root or the major root. Um, things like this. We'll take a closer inspection into the scale. We'll discuss stuff like sequences that uh, jazz pianists uh, used on pentatonic scales to give a kind of interesting uh, uh, note movement inside of them. And you can make up, it's kind of cool because you can make up your own sequences. Uh, that's what I did. I figured out what sequences are and then I just decided to make up my own. Uh, so you can create some really, really interesting sounds uh, with those. So that's in the future. I think really pretty much I explored all I want to explore today. I hope you get something out of this. I know I was talking really fast. I'm really caffeinated today. So um, sorry about that. If you have questions, raise your hand and post a comment and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, by the way, I've been, uh, been remiss in making these videos and I have um, a Skype student actually uh, off my YouTube channel, one of my uh, YouTube uh, subscribers uh, asked me if he could take guitar lessons from me and we do it through Skype. He lives in Georgia. Hey Chuck, how you doing man? I'll see you uh, on Wednesday. And if any of y'all uh, are interested in guitar lessons through Skype, I'd be happy to do it with you. Maybe take some of these ideas and, and make, the, uh, make them more accessible to you and easier to break down. I know music theory can be insanely, it can be a clusterfuck. Um, so the whole idea is start simple, keep thinking about it, you know, experiment with it, toy with it. If you're confused at this juncture, go back to the beginning, go look at the Greek modes and see how much you understand. Like I said, I'm always willing to answer questions. I love answering questions. It's my favorite thing. All right. Hope you guys uh, have a great day. I missed you and I'm so sorry. It's just I've been taken up by a lot of stuff with my record and I had uh, a lot of bad stuff happening in the uh, past three months. Uh, two car accidents, uh, no, neither of which were my fault, just that LA drivers suck and they, they don't pay attention. And uh, don't feel bad, nobody was hurt and my car is a beater, it just looks more like a beater now. It's the most embarrassing car, I think, to drive in Los Angeles. But that's what poverty gets you. Anyway, take care guys, I'll see you again. Bye.